Good afternoon, Floss Tube. It's Pam, Stitching Between the Lines. It is Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023, and this is Floss Tube video 125. I'm looking for my, uh, what do you call it, book of days, where I wrote it. But I just wrote it a couple minutes ago, so I'm pretty sure I'm right. But how did I lose the book of days already? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So I'm a few days late. I like to have a video out like on the first or the last day of the previous month. Um, my husband's working from home <laughs> and in our house, it's like very open and he's work while he's downstairs in the family room, the stairway, you know, all noise flows up, down, wherever. So he went over, <laughs> it's pouring rain and it's cold. I'm wearing flannel still and wool socks. He went over to um, the golf club. There's a convention in our town of people that are customers of his business. So he went over to meet them for lunch. There was supposed to be a golf outing today, but instead it's, it's all about poker because it's pouring rain and it has been for like forever. So anyway, he went over there. So I have a little reprieve. And then he's going to be back and he has a Zoom call to do or meeting, whatever. So I may, you probably won't even notice the blip unless it happens like that I video the entire next day that I finish this video on a whole different day. But I may, what I may do is just um, <clears throat> stop, regroup. Um, hopefully it'll be at a good spot. I can see the driveway. So if he comes home... Um, I'll know it. Okay, so what's been going on? April. April, WIPCO was um, one project, Kingdom of Books. So, oh, let me just back up the page a tiny little bit. So, I, I have a pencil. I have a piece of paper somewhere. I don't know. Hopefully, there's paper here. Always paper. I always have scrap paper because I need to write things all the time. <sighs> All right, I'll write on the back of this pattern, a pattern that I printed. Um, little hash, I have to keep little hashes, the hash total here. So, y'all watch Pam and Steph, just keep stitching, right? That's one. Um, they've started a new uh, segment of their video where they feature a silver and a gold floss tuber. So, this is all in good fun. I'm just telling you now. It's all in good fun. Um, silver being the newer floss tubes. Um, just drawing your attention to them and so on. And the gold being longtime floss tubers that um, they want to also draw your attention to in case you don't watch them. So it's been going on. Maybe maybe they, they Pam and Steph, that's number two, have been doing it um, maybe three or four videos. So... This is me today, Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023, campaigning to get myself on there. Gold, to be a gold, because I've been doing it for since January of 2017. So I'm pretty sure I'm qualifying the gold category. Um, so payment staff, I'm going to mention you so many times. Just keep stitching. That's what I'm keeping tabs on. See how many times I mention you. Um, cause you know, why not? So here we go. So anyway, back to the first thing the WIPCO April numbers were both Kingdom of Books, which I believe Steph has that pattern, Steph, of Just Keep Stitching. Pretty sure she bought it because, um, it represent the, it's a artistic rendering of the row houses on the canal in Amsterdam. So I'm pretty sure she bought it. Look at that. There's another mention, although that's in the same subject matter. But still, stuff. Just keep stitching. Um, okay. Did I mention I've met Pam and stuff of Just Keep Stitching? Several times at different retreats. I went to StitchCon a couple times and um, the first um, Farm Girl retreat in Amana. We were there together. So anyway, there we go again just name dropping um so kingdom of books kingdom of books looks like this i've been working on it forever and 
um, as is Brenda of um, Handwork Maniac, who was the gold mentioned most recently on Pam and Steph's Silver and Gold. You know, I'm just keep stitching. So she's got a different approach to hers than I do. I've been, like I said, working on it forever. Um, uh, forever. So here is mine. I am doing the background. It looks like it needs ironed, which it does. I stitch in hand, even this big honking monster. I have one more... Oops, sorry. I have one more book over here to do. And then I'll start down the other side. But as you can see, I this would be the middle. So with only one more book to do on this side, you can see I'm over half done. This pretty much from book to book end is 250 stitches across. And the whole pattern is 420 stitches wide. So making progress. I really thought I would get this book done as well. This book is done in greens, as is the little book that falls next in this lineup. So really, I would probably kind of do them at the same time. Green. Okay, get my lefts and rights going. My mirror mirror effect of my pictures. Green and green. So I'm coming right along. Yeah, coming right along eight years later. Um... <clears throat> And now that I've worked whip goat it both in one month, it's not going to come up on whip go again. But I hope that I can pull it out and put some stitches in throughout the year. Because in my whip go board, uh, there's things I finished already that haven't been called or, um, yeah, that I haven't, that are done. And obviously do whatever I want. Whip go for me, every project is work on it for 10 days. And so to get called in a month, that's 10 free days. I have this like drive to work on things that I start. Like I previously liked when I was working on things for a whole month at a time. And so 10 days doesn't quite feel like enough. So I just kind of keep going as long as I'm meeting my goals for the two pieces. And, you know, I have some outside of whip go projects um, that I've worked on. Uh, but still, that means some of these that are really short that won't take 10, 10 days. There's a couple of them um, that haven't been called yet. I have some free time. Every month I have some free time. And 10 days doesn't mean 10 days only that. So I really could pull it out. Even I have like in my mind the small goal of finishing the two green books. But we'll see how that goes. And then, um, so that was it for WIPGO. I went to a small retreat locally that was... Um, in the style of um, the frugal Yankee and the frugal empire retreats. And I went and it was a Friday and a Saturday and I took two things to work on. I took Prairie Schoolers um, February, which I started, um, I think there was a new start month maybe, a new start in one of the months. And I had already finished August of Waxing Moon Designs, which to me is very Prairie Schooler-like. And I thought that I would do start this one and put it in place of August by Waxing Moon when that gets called on Whipco, which is still out there to be called twice. So I started it, and I don't know if you recall, first I thought I would rechart it in overdies, and after I did that... I saw all my sulky threads in my cover and I changed them to that. So that's been kind of fun. Um, I am working right along. Let's see. There we go. I had previously showed you, I think I had the words all done and I had down here done, but at the retreat, this was one of the projects I worked on one of the days and I worked on filling in all the spaces on the log cabins because those weren't done. And then I changed my window colors. Let me get up close to yellow. I always like yellow in a window because, it, oh, I think I forgot to do this window. It just gives that like glow, a warm glow in a house. 
So I filled in the log cabin, the windows, I obviously forgot that one. And I started down here and I started with some of the letters. Well, actually I did the stump first, I think. And the stump is off, but I wasn't picking it all out. So I started some letters so that I could like close in on it with the letters, all these letters being in the right place and started some fill in. So it is chugging along. Oops. So I still have all these guys down here to do. The horse I feel like is like the biggest thing. And then this, of course. But that's one of the parts of it I really like. So I'm looking forward to that. And then the other piece I took to work on um, was, is, this was a start um, in the potential, potentially baby room decoration for my daughter. Um, whose nursery is sort of an under the sea type theme. And when I saw this, I thought, Ooh, I'm going to get that and start it. Tam's creation, um, published by creative poppy hippocampus and patches. I had, to, I ordered it on an Etsy shop. Uh, the name of, I can't tell you, but it was just the one pattern that I found there. And then I ordered some fabric also on an Etsy shop whose name I don't the fabric the fabric this fabric name is um, Bahama Mama but I don't remember the dyer I'll put it down below so when I showed it to you before I had just a little bit of in here done maybe I had some of the colored thread done but I w I've been working on various components of it since um, both for one day at the little retreat and since I got home, because in theory, I'd like to get this done before the summer is out. It's so clever and fun. Every time I sit down, I start doing a little background. I start doing a little shapes. And then when I do a shape with one of the colors, I go find wherever else that color is. So it feels like no real progress is being made, but I know all of a sudden it'll come together. So that's it. Four pieces, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three. That's three. I can count, um, which is not bad for a month because Kingdom of Books got a lot of um, attention. So what else am I doing that Pam and Steph are doing of Just Keep Stitching? um buying stuff not a lot i don't buy a lot usually but i did buy a couple things uh before pam showed this pam and stuff just keep stitching um i had already had this ordered and then she showed it on their video before the one before last this is madame chantilly's um fourth of july in a jar i just love that i love bunting as does pam of pam and stuff in the poppies, the patriotic flag ribbon. And uh, there's nothing not to like about this. Um, it is just so cool. Such a pretty pattern. I hadn't seen that anywhere. I don't know, somewhere I just suddenly saw it on, I don't know, a shop somewhere. And since I was ordering, I ordered a couple other things that I had admired from um, Market. Brenda Gervais, the robins are here, which is so stinking cute. Can you stand it? That is so cute. And the uh, um, spring awakens with the bunnies. I keep buying these, you know, uh, there's a word for that when you <laughs> humanize the animals, but I don't know what it is. I haven't really stitched them. Uh, I have that thing going on where I have trouble starting things. So every minute of the day, I'm thinking about what I'm going to start. And so two starts in May, I have not done either of them because mostly the noise in my head and or <laughs> been a little busy. Uh, I think about every day I'm going to start something new and different every day, every day, every day until I'm really doing it. So yesterday I pulled out something I thought I was going to start. Um, I was actually looking for a different pattern, which I didn't come across. It's in a project bag, but I don't know. I was going to show it and thinking about starting it. And Pam already did it of um, uh, Just Keep Stitching. 
she did it a couple years ago, but I've had it kitted up for a fair number of years. I don't know. I don't know what the holdup is, except that starting things is a challenge. So this one looked, this one, um, Dina of Just Keep Stitching did this one. And it's so stinking cute. Makes me think of my little girls at the beach. And now we're going to have another little girl. But today or during the night or whenever my brain was talking to me, it talked me out of starting that one. Possibly because Kingdom of Books, which is a big full coverage project from a kit, um, is, you know, intense. So I thought maybe I would do one less intense. No, 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 no. Have we met? Uh, I thought I would do one that had like more motifs that I could just work on and feel more accomplished. So I think, I mean, it is only 1245 on Wednesday morning. I think I'm going to start this one today. And that will be the first of my two to start. And what fabric do I have in here? Huh. Huh, huh, huh. A piece of very stiff, even weave mushroom something, something. I have no idea. Maybe it's name will pop up here. Yes, here's the name. Vintage Country Mocha 20 count. Oh, that's kind of an adventure. I think I've been all, I've been wanting something to start that to start on that. 20 count. We'll see. It's kind of a gray day with a lot of rain, so. And I also purchased from Vicki Clayton Silks. I've purchased her silk kit pack. Her, which I've used before, which I think I'm going to use. Hopefully there's really enough. If I'm doing it on 40 count, I really should be have plenty. I think this is six ply. Yep. So I would only use one strand. So it's actually appears to be um, the length of a skein of DMC because it's 8.7 yards, but I can't say for sure it's DMC. It's just coincidentally the same length. So I have those that maybe I'll be starting today. I also kitted up two things since we last met. I kitted up and actually thought about starting this. I feel like I remember saying this out loud, but I got this is all together. The fabric is in there. I talked about how I couldn't find the fabric and I thought I used it for something different. And then I found it in my, not in my car, but I found it in the bag that I take um, it, in like a tote that I had taken to my quilt guild meeting the first Monday in December. And I had picked up the mail on my way in or out and I threw it in that tote and then I hadn't looked at that tote again till I don't know when maybe the January meeting but you and I had already met and I said I couldn't find the fabric I know I bought the fabric my memory uh, was of cutting up some fabric that maybe I was afraid because it's on um, vintage country mocha but no here it is it was in an envelope in the car in the tote bag from my quilt guild I have all the threads. I got this out to start it one day and I looked at the pattern and I looked at the fabric and I said, eh, I just wasn't feeling it. But it's there. It's ready. It's ready should I decide to do that. And then the other one that I kitted up, well, I should start with the begin at the beginning of this story. When I was going to the retreat, um, I always like to take things for the free table. And usually I take whatever I'm done with, you know, I go to a retreat a year or so. And so there's usually some stuff and it's no big deal. Well, I haven't been to a tree, a cross stitch retreat in how many years, uh, at, you know, pre COVID times. So I hadn't been weeding out any of the things and my collection of stray patterns, done patterns, duplicate patterns was really big. So I started pawing through it and weeding out, which is very dangerous because that means I went through every file folder in, I have two 
file folder boxes with files in them and I file by designer for some that I have a lot of the same designer in one box and the other box is by season. So um, I'm pawing through them, which has led to this, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, this bin. So after I do all that, I take, you know, a stack of things. I put them in a tote ready to go to um, the retreat. And I have this tote of things that I pull out because they need to be next. I realized that I didn't see this particular pattern anywhere, which led to how many hours of dismantling my sewing room because I actually have this pattern twice. I finally found it. I forget where. Don't ask. I bought it on Stash Unload like at least four years ago. And I'm, you're starting to see people pull this one out and work on it again. And Sarah of Sarah's Stitchy Spot she features it in the start of her, the intro to her videos. So I actually don't have fabric picked out for it because I figured that's the easy part. It is almost completely full Oh, no. No, it's not full coverage. Let me get close. You can see there's empty and empty. What's interesting is that empty is a different color than this empty spot. So I don't know what that's all about. Oh, no. Ha, 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 ha. Joke's on you. I'm wondering if it's done with only one thread. Uh, this is stitched because you can see where you come up to the glow of the candle and that's not stitched. So that's not stitched. So it is almost full coverage, but the color is just real neutral. So I no real need to use like anything fancy. That's for sure. I figure I'll just go to my drawer and pull something out. So I'm calling it kitted up because, because, hello. Uh, and these aren't all new <laughs> full bobbins. Um, I go through all my boxes of bobbins and pull out what I need. Between these two things that I kitted up, I needed to go and get six or eight threads and that's it. So what I'll do is pull out one from what's in my, you know, big set, put it in here. And if it's a tiny, if I am missing, Mm, if it's almost an end of a bobbin, I'll pull out a second one, but usually I just pull out one and then I'll get a second one when I, when the time comes. So I put it in this project bag that I just got from Dot Dot Goose. And I, it's not a good project bag for this project. And since I don't seem to be emptying any of my giant project bags, I think I have to make a new project bag, which is, you know, doable. So that. So. When I, I was at the retreat recently, we were talking about what we were going to take with us in our coffin. <laughs> I don't remember how that started. Somebody was talking about some, you know, ultimate lifetime project, and that was coming with them in the end. I said, you know what? You know what's coming with me? Is my kit. Like, kit it up. So maybe that was like, cool, kit it up. So that made me feel better about all the things I kit up. I don't know how they're going to fit in the coffin with me, but whatever. So, okay, we're doing all right. No sign of my husband yet. I think he has a meeting at one o'clock, so I'm pretty sure he's rolling in at some point. So here are all the things that when I weeded through my bins that I thought I needed to start right away. And this is what I do. I get them out. I pile them up somewhere and then they just add to the clutter. Um, this I like because I love on a like. What is it? Summer Notes by Shepherd's Bush. I have no idea where I got that. Stash unload maybe? No idea. I've also purchased these because I just like, I like them. Summer in the Village, which is a Stony Creek, and Autumn in the Village, Stony Creek, and two more, or two more. Winter in the Village, Stony Creek. Spring in the Village, surprise, surprise. I bought these recently because Dina of Half Stitch Cross Stitch is doing one of them. I don't remember which, but I loved it. This one I love. I've had this one for a while. It's not kitted up. In my mental dialogue about what I was gonna start, this was on there, but it's not kitted. I gotta start something that's kitted, come on. 
Welcome Heart and Home of Stony Creek. I'm not really sure where I got this. Oh, this one. Hair Raising Halloween. I th Did I see somebody doing that? I've had it for a while. I got it from Stash and Loading. I love this one. Caring Hands by X's and O's. I bought this at a quilt show in Toronto um, when the designer of X's and O's, who's Canadian, was there with a the booth. Um, Christmas Last Minute is a Sarah design. Who's starting a Sarah? Who just showed a Sarah that they thought they were going to start? Was it Pam of Just Keep Stitching? I don't remember. She had one. Somebody, I mean, whoever showed it, had one of these similar. It's a big one, I believe. It was around Easter time, so Bent Creek's Easter, what is this one called? That egg's not big, it's Uber, so Uber egg, I don't know. Kind of lost the beat, the urge for that. Um, this one I've had for years. I don't remember where I got it, but it is interestingly enough, it's got somebody's address label in there. I bought it at the cross stitch store in Canandaigua or this person did. Did I get it on a free table? Did I get it on stash and load? I've had it so long. I can't even imagine. Oh, no, that's the designer's name down there. Okay. Address label on there. So uh, I live outside Canandaigua, near Canandaigua. And Canandaigua always is on a lake, Canandaigua Lake, um, in the Finger Lakes. And they always hang these double hanging baskets on the lampposts up Main Street. So I love that. Um, the bottom row is grapes some ducks in the water. Um, Canada was known as the chosen spot. It is pouring rain. The double baskets, the sailboats, and sunflowers. Yep, sunflowers. That's just pretty. I don't know why I don't just knock those out. And here's another one. This one I definitely bought like on stash unload, unloading, whatever, is the Finger Lake Sampler by Bright Needles, which one of the Bright Needle designers um, is in this area. And I love it. So cute. And apparently on that same bend on water themed things was uh, the tiny modernists beside the sea. I can't read backwards, apparently. Which is really cute. Except I'm beside the lake. Oh, I got a project bag in here. I wonder what's in here. Be scared. Oh, no, I kitted this up and was almost going to start it at one point, and I never did. Patriotic Tiny Town. I'm on the wait list somewhere. Not wait list. The pre-order list for the newest Tiny Town. The picture was released at market. I knew right away I had to have that. I, I pulled this one out. Teresa Kogitz. Something about a cat. <laughs> I don't know. Tabby's Halloween, because it's cute. It's a cat. Um, Primrose Cottage's uh, pumpkin patch. Everything's in plastic. We're just going to have to deal. I'm not dismantling everything. I'm sure that meets with a thumbs down from Pam and stuff. <laughs> just keep stitching, because they always show everything so nicely. I just don't have the, um, whatever. Uh, Quaker Garden. Don't you love that? That's Hello from Liz Matthews. Oh, Stitch an Inch, the summer one. I ordered that this winter, I think. Because Catherine of Needleberry Stitches is doing it, right? She's doing the summer one or she's doing the fall one? Couldn't stand how cute it was. Uh, uh, at the same time, I bought Stitch an Inch winter. Because again, loved it. This is very much in reminiscent of the tiny towns, which is Primrose Cottage's Star Spangled Street. I like a street scene. Did you notice that? There's a lot of street scenes going on. Uh, Croquetta Go Go's. This one I was thinking needed to be started soon. What's its name? 12 Christmas Vintage Series. It is 
called Artwork 8. I don't know. Oh, these I purchased. Uh, this is one of the ones I purchased anyway. Pansy Patch Quilts and Stitchery. It's Peace Winter at Pansy Patch Manor. Um, I bought these before I'd ever seen anybody post anything about them. Because I like quilts. Things like that. This is one of the ones that I just covet every time I see somebody doing it. Summer at Hollyberry Farm. I got thread in there, but I don't have fabric. And it's way bigger than you think. Oh, here's the other Pansy Patch. Um, it's called Hope Summer at Pansy Patch Manor. I love the border on this one. Let's see what the border on the other one looks like. Oh, it's cute too, but it's not the same. It looks like that. Uh, Chessie and Me's Stella's Sleigh Ride. I think that's so cute. Uh, I haven't figured out where to buy the sleigh yet. Crook had a go-go believe in Christmas. Look, there's fabric and floss in this one. Glendon Place. Oh, I got this at market a couple years back. Um, I, uh, with the silks. Oh, that's beautiful. Holy cow. Reminds me, like, when I did the Glendon Place ornaments all around, it's in keeping with that sort of theme called uh, the Hibiscus Mandala. Beautiful colors. Um, Blackberry Lane Designs, Frosty Weather. That's so cute. Look at the fabric. I have the polka dot fabric. Oh, this one I love. I love it because there's beads involved. And my favorite flowers are all these summery Florida E flower flowers. It's called Paradise Floral. And finally, Just Nan's Floral 15. Um, Luda tends, has a tendency to do these and finish them up, as does on Instagram oh my gosh I'm so sorry I can't remember she doesn't do floss too but she'll do little Instagram videos I met her in Florida once I'm gonna have to put the name either here or in the drop down I keep telling her she needs to do floss too because she does such beautiful work so there look at us go so how many things in here do Pam and Steph also own I'm not really sure um, probably a few of them, and I just either don't remember or don't remember. I was going to get down a piece that I stitched in his frame that Pam just showed that she purchased recently, uh, probably on a stash unloading kind of site. It's one of the Bent Creek snappers, and I have it, and it's all framed, but I need a ladder, and um, I, I wasn't feeling it right now. To go find a ladder. I know there's one downstairs. I'm not hauling that up. Um, <clears throat> so we'll have to do that next time. If my currently 16 mentions of Pam and Steph of Just Keep Stitching don't get me on their next month's worth of videos featuring their uh, silver and gold element, element little segment. Is there anybody else who's mentioned Pam and stuff of Just Keep Stitching now 17 times in a half hour video? Probably not. So. I'm going to have to get creative. Because that wasn't creative. I don't know. Nobody else has done it that I've seen. So. Shameless. Shameless. That was shameless, but it's all in good fun, right? So what you got to do is go over to Pam and Steph of Just Keep Stitching and keep your eye out. Keep your ear to the ground. See if you hear a mention of um, Stitching Between the Lines. Pam, also same name as Pam of Pam and Steph, Just Keep Stitching. Uh, you know, I'm up to 19 mentions. See if we can make it an even 20 as we wind this up. Um, cause who knew I would be done this soon? I was going to go through, uh, my project bags over there of kitted up things, but I just can't because as you see, it's dangerous for me to see other things that are ready to start. 
I don't know. I don't have attention deficit in any other way, part of my life. And once I start something, I work on it. So it's not like I don't do it. For some reason, I have a block about starting them. I think they weigh on me once they're started, I think. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Don't try to make sense of it. Don't, don't make excuses. Don't anything. It's the way it is. It's the way it is. It's a lot of noise in my head. Um, no mania for me. Not doing mania. Mania and I fell apart, broke up a couple years ago. Um, and that's okay. I'm doing Whipco this year and it's fun. I look forward to what the, what the draws are going to be each month, what I'm going to get to work on. And it's not like I can't work on it any other time. It's just fun. Um, when it's left to me to decide, I think sometimes things get pushed to the back. So this will pull them into the works. So yay me. I believe this is going to be the last rainy day for a while. Uh, maybe this storm is like a big circle that just keeps going around and it rains for five minutes and then it's not. And then it rains for five minutes and then it's not. And it's been doing that for a solid week. It's kind of fun. It's an adventure. Uh, we didn't have a lot of snow this winter, so I guess we need the water. I don't know. The farmers may think differently about what's going on because they can't be getting in their fields. But I always say we can have snow up until Mother's Day. So, you know, this is spring. This is April showers leading on into May. It's all good. I like weather. I like there to be weather things going on. So anyway, here comes Cooper. Let's see if he comes by for a visit. Coopy, what you doing, baby? He doesn't visit me all that often in here. Come on. There's too many. There's a lot of danger things in here, like easy to get up on a counter and slip and slide or knock something over. So, nope, he just turned the corner, went a different direction. So, I'm going to stitch this afternoon. Um, I had um, uh, been busy. Jumped right up out of bed this morning and got to work. And I even forgot to put my watch on, I noticed. And then I went back to get my earrings and my watch and i saw outside there was a great a big a blue heron down on the beach so then i had to hurry up and go find my phone so i could take a couple pictures of him so um you know maybe we'll see i'll put one in here we'll see it's we don't see those i don't see those a lot on our beach um don't know what brought him by except he's out hunting i guess um, so anyway, fun times. All right. Uh, payment stuff. Got to make it an even 20. Just keep stitching. I'm available. I'm available for one of your time slots for your, uh, silver and gold, probably the gold. Cause you know, seven plus years. So have a good one, everybody. And I'll see you soon. And, uh, yay. I got a video done. Look at me go.